Hey everyone, Effie here. Today we're going to make a card using our fireplace background stamp. We are re-releasing this stamp as a clear stamp. The dimensions are the same as a cling stamp. They're just clear now. We're also using a combination of the sets that you see here, our fireplace holiday accessory set and our fireplace accessory set. We're also going to use the holiday ballet, which is on the left side. We actually don't use the City Girls Snow Day set on the right hand side of the screen. Each of the four sets that you see along the bottom portion of the screen, they have smaller images that I like to use in conjunction with each other and I'm going to start pulling small image stamps from each of the sets and I'm going to lay them upon the fireplace background so that I can get a general idea of where I want to position things. I'm going to pull the tree stamp from the holiday ballet set. I also pulled the little nutcracker stamp and the rocking horse stamp and I actually don't use the rocking horse stamp in the final card. Most of the images that I'm using today are from the fireplace holiday accessory set like the wreath, the chair, the stockings, the bow for the wreath, the garland for the fireplace, the actual fire in the fireplace, the rug, the dog, the cat, the end table, the candles, and I'm using the vases and the longer candlestick in the original fireplace accessory set. And then I just pulled the smaller nutcracker from the ballet set. Now I'm going to stamp the background fireplace stamp. I placed it right inside my Misty. The Misty has our six by seven inch grip mat inside. After I've positioned the background stamp, I place my A2 cardstock inside the Misty and it's being held by that grip mat. I'm going to stamp the background in our caviar hybrid ink, which is alcohol marker friendly. And then I took the texture stamp from our original fireplace holiday stamp. So this actually coordinates with that background stamp. So it's the texture for the fireplace. I position that onto my panel and stamp that with our caviar ink. We're using Spectrum Noir's Tri-Blend Alcohol Ink Markers. I love these because you have all three shades of one color on the one markers. I place the cap on screen so that you guys can see exactly which marker I'm using. So this is the dark red blend and I started off with the lighter red then orange and yellow on the stockings. The reason why I'm adding the orange and yellow glow to the bottom edge of the stockings is because I wanna add the glow from the fireplace. So that's how I color in all of the stockings. Next, I use the light red and dark red onto the bow, and then I use orange and yellows for the fire. Next, I color in the candles with the same light red and dark red markers. For the longer candlestick, I used a light brown for the base and the red for the candle and I used yellows for the candle frame. Then for the end table, I used the light shade and the dark shade of the brown colors. And then for the pup, I used the gold brown blend and then used the brown marker to add shading to the dog. For the cat, I added orange stripes and then I used the light grayish bluish marker for the rest of the cat's body. Then I added red and blue to the small nutcracker. Then I did some really easy, simple coloring for the rug. I just used the light gray and then darker gray along the bottom edge of the rug rug and then blended it in with the light gray. Then for the armchair, I used light red for the blanket and then added shading with the darker red marker. I'm not going crazy in trying to get a perfect blend or perfect shading in my coloring today. I just wanted to do some easy and relaxing coloring. And most of these images are smaller, so you really don't have to go too crazy with trying to get the perfect blend between all the different shades of colors. It'll all come together when you assemble your card at the end. I find that when you use these alcohol markers as you color, as they absorb into the cardstock, the ink kind of softens and you don't get such harsh edges. That's why after I go in with my light shade and then the darker shade, I don't really go back and blend the darker shade with the lighter. Again, these are smaller images, so I just kind of want to move on. For the Christmas tree, I blend the light green for most of the tree as the base color, but I left a sliver of white along the right edge of the tree, which I colored in with the yellow marker. And the yellow represents the glow from the fireplace. I use the mid-tone and darker tone of the green marker for the shading for the tree and just follow the 
curves or the lines that you see inside the tree, that's where you know where to add the darker greens. And then I added red to the ornaments and bows. And then I used a green and red marker for the presents. And then I used a red and green glitter pen for the ribbon on the gift images. Then I die cut all of those images that we colored. And now I'm going to color in the background for the wooden floor panels. I'm using the lighter brown and you can see really, I'm just, I just want to cover the bottom portion of my card panel with this light brown ink and I'm just being really messy about it and now I'm going to take the darkest brown and I'm just going to use flicking motions along the bottom edge of the card panel and I'm going to flick towards the fireplace and then I go back and I do blend some of the dark brown uh, into the light brown. Now I'm going to use the light gray marker and just add shading to the walls and the stone wall. I'm going to cover the entire stone wall paneling with the light gray. So that's my base color. After I finish with the light gray, I'm going to use the mid-tone gray of this marker and I'm going to follow the curves of each stone and just add an outline of the light gray marker to add that shading. Next, I'll use the light brown marker for the base paneling and the fireplace, the wooden portions of the fireplace, and also the frames of the windows. Now the tree is going to take up a large portion of the left side of my background. So I placed a tree over the background to see where I don't need to color. So I'm gonna leave portions of the left window uncolored. I added some gray shading to the walls in the background and under the windows and then I added some gray and yellow inside the fireplace because again the yellow represents the glow from the fire. I add some more gray and mid-tone gray coloring to the brick of the fireplace and then I used a black pen to add some coloring to the paneling on the fireplace. For the windows I used a light gray and a mid-tone purple for the outside coloring. You can add darker colors for the windows because then it'll look like nighttime scene. You could also add dots of white with a white gel pen or an acrylic marker to add a snowy scene, but I decided to keep it a little bit more simple today. And now I'm going to start gluing everything down for the tree. I just added a dot of glue and stuck that down because I knew that I'd have to get some things glued down behind the tree, but I did want to get the tree down first. And then I just started gluing everything else down. It was really fun to put this card together. It's almost like a 2D dollhouse very festive, very fun. The tree was hanging off, so I just cut off the excess piece, and now I just need a sentiment. So I'm going to use our Easy Expressions Holiday Set. It's a six by eight set. There are two long stamps in this set this stamp that you see me peeling off. I'm going to stamp this first in our caviar hybrid ink. It's just a black ink. You can use any black ink or you can use any ink color that you like, but I usually stamp this in black ink. There are bars and squares on this stamp that get stamped out. So you're going to take the second long stamp, align the bars and squares, and just stamp that in another color. I'm using our red sangria ink. I double stamped this second stamp. And then the coordinating die is one die, which is going to cut out all of the sentiments in one single shot. For this card, we're going to use the deck the hall sentiment. And then lastly, we're just going to use our clear rhinestones. I added it in a visual triangle around my sentiment and my card is now complete. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to our channel because I'll be updating it more regularly. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.